Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Assembling a large commercial aircraft is far from a simple process. This remained the case for the Boeing 747 throughout the course of the plane's 53-year production history. The 747 is often considered the very first jumbo jet. It boasts a wingspan of 195 feet and a length of 231 feet. Later models, like the 747-8, were capable of carrying up to 467 passengers over nearly 8,000 miles. To assemble an aircraft of this size, multiple teams must work together while remaining in close communication. Each component, including the nose, wings, tail, engines, and fuselage, is manufactured separately in a separate area of the facility. Each of these various parts is then brought together on a massive factory floor. Once the fuselage has taken shape, Systems like landing gear, hydraulics, and plumbing can be installed. From here, all of the various passenger needs, like seats and storage bins, are added in accordance with the purchasing airline's design scheme. As one of the largest aircraft manufacturers in the world, Boeing performs extensive testing on each of its assembled aircraft. This includes a battery of in-flight maneuvers, as well as a wide range of takeoff and landing tests. Perhaps the most dangerous of all of these is extreme takeoff testing. This is done to assess the aircraft's ability to perform during abnormal conditions like high altitude, high temperature, and low air density. It also involves using planes that are overweight, underpowered, or otherwise not operating under ideal conditions. One version of this is known as Velocity Minimal Unstick Test. It involves dragging the tail of the plane on the runway to investigate the lowest possible speed at which the 747 can take off. During ground effects testing, the 747 is tasked with hovering over the runway to see how ground proximity can affect aerodynamics. One of the most extreme tests Boeing has ever subjected a 747 to is known as a rejected takeoff. This is when a pilot slams on the brakes just before the plane becomes airborne. 
The purpose of the test is to see how quickly the aircraft can come to a safe stop if it, for any reason, must abandon a takeoff attempt. In one particular dangerous scenario, a Boeing 747-8 was loaded to maximum takeoff weight and fitted with 100% worn-out brakes. However, the amount of heat generated by the brakes actually caused the wheels to catch fire. Fortunately, Boeing fits their tires with special fuse plugs that can deflate them before they explode. In early 2023, the very last 747 completed testing and was shipped off to join the fleet at Atlas Air. It was a real milestone for Boeing and the wide-body factory in Everett, Washington. Over the years, the plane had evolved into a true icon, with nearly 1,600 planes being produced in all. But Boeing 747 didn't just revolutionize passenger travel, it also changed the way that large planes were manufactured. Since the 1990s, companies like Boeing have increasingly embraced robotics and artificial intelligence as part of their production process. Perhaps the best example is the FAUB, or Fuselage Automated Upright Build. Part of the new 777 assembly process, the FAUB includes a team of robots that work in pairs to construct the fore and aft sections of the aircraft. Their jobs include fastening panels, sealing sections of the plane's body, and tightening components both inside and out. The robots in the FAUB are fully mobile, with some of the most prominent devices moving around on automated guided vehicles. This ensures they can work on multiple planes, no matter where they are on the factory floor. Another part of the 777 production process where robotics are playing an increasingly significant role is painting. In fact, Boeing recently established a brand new facility at its Everett, Washington factory where various components, such as wings, can be painted with maximum accuracy in minimal time. The robot painting team is known as the ASM, or Automated Spray Method. As with the FOB armatures, the ASM robots are versatile enough to simultaneously apply two paint colors at two different thicknesses. According to Boeing executives, it used to take 30 to 40 painters a whole day to complete the same job the robots could do in mere minutes. Every airline has its own brand, style, and target audience. For this reason, 
Companies like Airbus and Boeing must customize each final aircraft's paint job and interior design to the client's specifications. This A380 is being furnished for Asiana Airlines, a Korean company headquartered in Seoul. The outside of the plane has already been painted in the proper color scheme, but now it is time for the Airbus technicians to paint and assemble the interior. This process includes mounting the storage bins, installing the seats, and adding all the warning signs, stickers, and button controls in the appropriate language. In first and business class, all the seats, tray tables, and computer systems must be thoroughly tested before the plane is delivered. While Boeing and Airbus test their planes extensively once the build is finished, they also thoroughly test the components before the final assembly process starts. On the other hand, Airbus prefers to investigate the durability of its plane's components using static ground testing. This involves checking the plane's various structural limitations by placing it inside a giant motorized cage. The cage comprises 2,500 tons of steel covered with sensors and mechanical pulleys. These push and pull at the wings and fuselage sections to find the absolute amount of stress each component can handle. The system also pressurizes the inside of the fuselage using a massive system of tubes. In many cases, the planes will undergo pressures far beyond what they would encounter in the air or even in space. Boeing has a similar process for investigating the structural limits of their aircraft. Fatigue testing. This process utilizes yet another steel cage, but is far more exact and lasts much longer than the Airbus evaluation. In this case, this completed 787 will go through more than 100,000 simulated flights. This is again accomplished via a system of pulleys and sensors. But the goal is not to see how strong the airplane's components are. Instead, the engineers want to see how well the plane can hold up over time. This allows the team to know precisely when in the plane's life cycle it will require certain repairs or replacements. Fatigue testing like this can take more than three years. However, this extended span of time does not compare to the lives of the pilots, crew, and passengers flying in them. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.